she just glanced over to my hand. No, that's a no-go. Welcome to number one Crude Mistakes. I'm KJ at Crude But Efficient, and with me is Harvard from Behind the Mistakes and Glenn from Number One Projects. Hello, so how's the week been, guys? Well, I posted another video. I'm really pleased with that. Now I have two videos in two weeks. That's it's not often that happens. It's not something that we should get used to, I guess. No, not at all. I think it's, uh, well, the next queuing up now is the one I'm making for um, Halloween. So three weeks, is it? I just realized we're into October, so. Yeah, it should be something like that, I guess. Have you started that project yet, Ovard? Define started. I ordered all the parts that I think I need, at least. Um, and I have all the materials. So it's it's a day of drawing before I can start the, the printing press, I guess. And after that, it should be an assembly. So I should have decent amount of time to get it done. But then again. I have a tendency of finding speed bumps for myself. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, how about you, Glenn? Oh, just a, a week. It's been a week. It's been all right. Um, the weekend was spent finishing the utility. That's done. Tick. Um, wow. <laughs> yeah. Um, I get some posts. I'll get some pictures out on that tomorrow. Um, just because I've bored people with it enough now. Are you for hire? I mean, at this pace, I'm really impressed. I mean, that's worth buying an airplane ticket and paying you by the hour. <laughs> I'd, I'd love a change of scenery. I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's the, it's the maker uh, meetup here in Oslo in a short while, so we can make a two for one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that'd be great. I spent all my airfare money on the new tools this week. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a real issue. I see that. <laughs> hey, I've got to say, I'm really, really pleased with the bandsaw got to have a play with it for the first time yesterday yeah the not matibo one yeah yeah the not matibo one the record yeah, nice. one, the one the one with a bit more power than yours excuse me when when you say matibo do you mean metabo probably <laughs> because i thought about this the last time that if if, if we're talking about the, the the brand that's quite big and it's sort of green uh i think you it sounds like you switch places with the e and the a yeah i think I think yeah. if there's a way of saying things incorrectly, I'm your man. <laughs> I, seem, I seem to do this quite regular with ladies' names, Havard's name. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what else have I got wrong? Last week I said I didn't know how to make a play button and I meant a YouTube counter. So yeah, Details, like, details. Who cares? Like I said right at the very start, <laughs> I'm not your best person for the English language. <laughs> <laughs> well, I that's... mean, it's a thought that's counts i guess yeah it's good for the rest of us that's just making it up as we go along going back to what we did this week i've um, i've still not started a youtube um video or project but um i'm just waiting for a nice sunny day the first sort of scene i want to film while all the materials are still intact um mm. needs to be outside so it just needs to be nice and sunny and then i'll get cracking hopefully so we get the new one in april then <laughs> oh, no. I thought exactly. <laughs> I'm not quite as far north as you guys. <laughs> We've got 24 degrees forecast here for the weekend. Ooh, nice, nice. But that is real issue actually when you are also making videos, not only doing the project. When you got a really good idea for, like the timeline and setting for the video, and of yeah. course buying materials are often not cheap, so you have to think about it, and you often got just one go before you get into the project and you have ruined the material. So yeah, I've been there a couple of times where I really have to wait for the perfect weather or something because I wanted to film it in a certain way. Yeah. yeah. And then you have the project when, when, when time drags out. I mean, I have one we still have been working on more or less on and off. And I realized, but oh yeah, it's snow in one of those scenes. Hmm. <laughs> well, I just should just wait another couple of months and then it'd be fine. No, I. <laughs> I've started not caring about consistency. I, I like my last video, I cut it like it was on the same evening, but I got different clothes on and I might also have shaved in between, but I, I can't really care to keep a detail on that as well. That's too much. Yeah. I just thought you were a bit of a dirty worker, basically, and you, you just 
<laughs> oh, I am. <laughs> Very much. <laughs> yeah. You just kept having to shower in between scenes. I thought that was what was going on there. I, I'm so I'm so glad that my workshop are small is smaller. I mean, I I, I can't work with anyone. <laughs> <laughs> I really like that video from Phil from Dark Star did, where every clip he had a he had a different maker T-shirt on. So it's you you went quite insane after a while trying to keep keep a count on how many shirts he actually had in that video. So that's the different road to go instead of to to do too much. Yeah. Then again, I don't have enough t-shirts for that. I need to. Then I need to invest. So, talking of clothing, did you um, did you choose those socks specially for that opening scene? <laughs> the, the, the little tape uh, socks. Oh, it's I. And the footwear well, at the side. <clears throat> no and yes. Uh, <laughs> the first thing I. I, I, I I just didn't want to use my shoes or flip-flops on the pedals. Um, and I knew I was going to get reaction on those socks because I always do. And it's either people are like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> or it's like, oh, you're a runner and I'm neither. <laughs> so it's, uh, I can't remember. I think it's 20 years ago. I tried toe socks for the first time just as a giggle because I saw them in the shops. And then it feels weird the first time around, but uh, when you got the really good one for the five finger running shoes and you get used to them, there's no going back. So that's that's what I'm afraid of, that I would like them too much and that it would be way too expensive to replace my entire stock storage yeah, that, with those. That's another thing. It's They are crazy expensive. You can't get these in like a 10 pack economy bundle. And of course, it's a pain in the ass when you are washing them because you have to pair up a left and a right. Uh, so that's the added hassle as well. But the benefit, and I'm also using like, don't know what the professional term, but like this wide shoebox shoes that allows your toes to spread out more. It really is. Uh, my feet aren't built for normal narrow shoes. They get too squished together. So it's, it's really nice. That's also why I like as much as I can in the summer to be barefoot. So now it feels weird in the winter time when I start well, needing to have shoes and socks on every time. So I'm not being um, judgy or anything because you know it's not the day and age for it. But those, <laughs> those shoes that were at the side were they your wife's or are they yours? Those uh, those flip flops. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they are my wife's. Um, <laughs> that being said, I have not the biggest feet, and then. For all the flip flops and so on, if you're not using like thicker winter socks or something, I, I can easily fit into her flip flops to her raging dismay, <laughs> not not finding anything where she left it. But it's really nice for me. It's like uh, let's like say if you have a sister, you have double the wardrobe. Uh, I'm I'm doing the same principle in shoes. I mean, if it's if it's there, it's mine for the taking. <laughs> so is it? Does it just go as far as shoes or? <laughs> that's for a I completely mean, it's, different it's, podcast yeah. it's, it's your life like i said i'm not judging it's just curious <laughs> just to wait and see when your kids get old enough <laughs> that, that concludes all my questions on your wardrobe what about you kj any more questions about his clothing choices <laughs> no 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 i'm I, I think it's great but yeah the socks were i i didn't really think about it but my wife reacted to it directly when we watched your video together. So, so did mine actually. She was the first one to bring it up. So <laughs> apparently, it worked. Yeah, it's the small details. You have to uh, watch my videos several times over because nothing is left to chance. Every small detail is uh, put in there with a <laughs> high degree of uh, deliberate, deliberate, de deliberately. <laughs> deliberately, yeah, that's all. <laughs> So watch them multiple times, especially on different IP addresses. Yeah, that's a clue. Yeah, and then it's a like and subscribe. I mean, you tricked uh... me into watching uh, one of your other videos twice. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I, just, you, released, uh... you released a video and I watched it, and then you said, "Did you see your uh, Did you see your sticker in the background?" I was like, "No, no, I'm going to have to rewatch it all over again." <laughs> yeah, so that that's my that's my tactic now. I just do that with all the makers. Did you see your sticker in my video? And they're like playing it over and over again, trying to find it, and it really boosts the, <laughs> the viewing time. <laughs> I actually accidentally watched your laser video twice, Glenn, because I, I watched it when it came out, and then I 
I didn't delete it from the watch later for some reason. Was, oh yeah, I, I didn't watch that. Did I know? And then I started watching it. This seems oddly familiar. <laughs> and then <laughs> when I came to the end, end, I realized, oh, I've seen this before. That's why. <laughs> That's the perfect video. It should be so so bland that people don't remember it, but it should have a good thumbnail and a catchy intro so it actually pops up in people's feed because then they can watch it several times. <laughs> I like um, I like doing the shorts with no obvious end. So, <laughs> so people just watch them. And, Has this thing ended yet? Has it just started? What's going on? <laughs> oh. In late, out early. Absolutely. <laughs> and my week, you ask? Well, uh, compared Sorry, to... Sorry, we <laughs> It's fine. It's. I mean, that's the that's the common theme for. I mean, making it and all that. Bob always has to go uh, and ask himself. Uh, I mean, last time we recorded, my my weekend was just being being socializing with other people. But this weekend was the op- opposite. It was all hard work. Some of it uh, in the workshop, getting some progress on my on my project at the moment. But but mostly being outside moving heavy logs and doing yard work and that sort of thing i saw the log moving did you have you not got a chainsaw to make did you not have a chainsaw to make them smaller no no i oh. actually don't have a chainsaw and i okay. i don't didn't really feel like investing in one yeah and uh, going back to the the flea market i went to uh, a couple of weeks ago there i saw a lever lift block i think it's called spark lift block in swedish that you use to to hoist things around and i saw one so, oh that's nice. And then just two seconds after I saw it, someone else picked it up, looked at it, paid for it and left. So I felt like I was like 15 seconds too late to actually see it. <laughs> so then when I when I saw one in the hardware store the other day, I just felt like, ah, it's time. I just should just buy a new one. So I did. And then I, I actually could move all those logs that, that the council thinks they should be laying right beside our driveway and being something to have to have to look at every time you back out the car and that's been annoying for the last year or something like that so i just (laughs) pull them up like four or five meters into the forest so they can lay there in a rut instead i actually i think it was yesterday i was out uh, bicycling with uh, the oldest and someone had cut down a big ass ash tree and looking at it, it would make for some really good materials. And a couple of weeks ago, uh, I learned that my uncle actually got one of these portable sawmills. Mm-hmm. That's actually a, a trailer which you hook up to the car. But of course, he lives so far away and there is no way I could get those material onto my trailer. At least not that amount and then drive for eight hours to get him to cut it up and back again. But it's just a matter of time before... I stumble over a oak tree or something, then the math will add up differently. <laughs> <laughs> KJ's taking it one further. Your father has a sawmill, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah, uh, has a sawmill, but uh, no oak trees, I think. Well, no, no, no big ones. Uh, like three years ago, he he planted oak trees in one of his fields. Right. That's proactive, but <laughs> yeah, that's going to be uh, a long wait. So yeah, he's generate. he's seventy four. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, he's 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 not even planting them for his grandchildren, <laughs> more for his grandchildren's grandchildren. Unless he's uh, planning on entering Glenn's domain and making chopsticks, then then it might work. <laughs> it sounds like they would be quite bendy, I think. But yeah, I think that sort of patience has um, carried over actually, KJ, to you because watching some of your videos, you're incredibly patient and persistent on the way you work. So I rewatched, um, you made an axe handle today from a piece of tree. Yeah. And the the first thing you did was stab yourself in the finger. Yeah. Which was hilarious. <laughs> that's then... nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and that's then... gonna, oh, I'm sorry. That's no, okay. And then, um, you know, you go through this really slow process of shaping it, but the patience and persistence is something to be admired, I think. And I think it was similar in your mallet video where you basically hand sanded the mallet into shape. Yeah. I just, I don't have the patience for that. It's power tools or nothing, I'm afraid. <laughs> well, I guess it's, I don't really have any good power tools to do that. So it's being too tight to actually buy the proper tools Then I have to make do what, what I have. Just... I'm actually going to do that. Uh, I might 
need to do it at my mom's cabin because we might move from this house before I can harvest it. But uh, we have some friends not far from here. They have a lot of oak trees and also the the small younglings, uh, which I went there last summer and just picked up some of them and put them on various places around the house. But I do have an old axe in need of a new handle. So if I get an oak tree that's not too big so that I can take the head of the axe and just slip it down over the oak tree and then it can sit there for the years it needs to for the tree to grow into and when it's really grown into in a tight fit with the handle then I cut the tree and voila you have a handle. That might be my longest project though. So that's that would be awesome. really cool. Somebody else was talking about that this week. I can't remember who, but it's not the first time I've heard that theory. I've, I've seen a lot of videos where people find old cars or bicycles that has at some point just been left and then a tree has grown up into the frame or something. Yeah. And I saw this one guy, he has restored the car and of course some kind of tree has grown and formed around the chrome bumper of the car. And of course he had to cut the tree but the tree stump around the fender, he just left that in place. So he had a beautiful restored car and that chrome fender, of course, you can undo the the fender and just take it off and put a new one in. But you just left the old one there with the tree trunk uh, bending around it. <laughs> <laughs> just as a homage to the tree he had to cut down. <laughs> that's really nice. I mean, that's, that, that would be a great callback to what... A lot of blacksmiths are talking about that the Scandinavian way of putting a handle on something is just taking the first random stick you find and, and put it on for a hammer or an axe or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> so actually having a homegrown axe handle, oh, that's brilliant. Definitely do that. But I mean, it's, uh, it's also doable as a separate project. You can do a speed run. I'm not sure how good bamboo will be as a handle, but that's a project you can get done really quickly. Just to uh, to get a grasp of the concept before you go all in with a oak tree that needs to grow for sixty years before you can. Yeah, maybe a, a, a really small hammer instead for the the fine detail hammer. Yeah. I think you're still about two two years waiting for the bamboo version to work out. I mean, I realize that's a lot a lot quicker than the oak version, but uh, still pretty still pretty invested time wise. I think that whole car story about the tree growing around the bumper of the car. Reminds me of a story that my uh, next door neighbours told me a few years ago. So they bought their house in the 1950s, brand new, and they let the garden get all overgrown and didn't clear it for years and years and years. And when they cleared the garden, they found their old mini amongst it and they just completely forgot that their car was there. (laughs) (laughs) I've seen similar cases and it just blows my mind that you can actually forget something like that. Like, oh, yeah, that's right. We had a mini at some point. Oh, that's where it went. (laughs) Uh. Speaking of yard work, I had had a problem with my my lawnmower. I thought maybe you can help with that, Glenn, that the wheel (laughs) fell off (laughs) halfway through mowing. I'm a gardener, not a mechanic. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I, th- that's never happened to me before and it was kind of tricky to to finish the mow with only three wheels but <laughs> not impossible no no you just have to keep your balance and it was the uh, turning that was the hard part when you relax and you're walking along and you just let the mower tilt a little bit was it just varying the height of the grass a little might have been might have been but then again the grass was it was too too wet to actually cut properly so it's yeah. gonna look bad either way but it's well, it was really really awkward because it was the wheels on the lawnmower are, are situated on an axle so you can change the the height yeah and it just that axle broke off clean cleanly so it, a bit of it was in the the part that had the wheel and a bit so I, I don't really understand how it could break that way <laughs> you guys you seem to have these big steep gardens and you know quite hard landscape really and you buy these really weedy lawnmowers <laughs> Both of you are guilty of it, aren't you? I do got this um, well, petrol-powered, uh, like the Stiga, which you have like a harness and everything, and uh, with a cutting blade and so on. But it, it's tedious work, so that's once a year. And then yeah. we that, live on a sorry, sorry, is that a grass trimmer? Yeah, 
Yeah. Grass trimmer on steroids. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then we also, and that this is brilliant. You actually get like a, a hedge trimmer attachment to that as well, yeah. which will then have a long reach, which is which is brilliant. So I'm using that for everything. And uh, since we are living on such a steep slope, I also used uh, the Freemo, the electric uh, hovering 80s kind of invention. Yeah, because they are... for the English listeners. Yeah, uh, yeah. which is really. Well, it's light for working in the slopes, but of course, I break one a year, so I, I only buy them used. <laughs> <laughs> that being said, if I bought a new one, it might last longer than a year, but I, I think I pay 40 pounds on average per one, and I, I can spend that a year. And then I don't have to care running over roots and everything that grows up. I'm driving it to the ground and. Of course, the positive thing is it, it got no wheels to lose, mm -hmm. but I did break the the motor from the chassis here on this year's crash and burn session. So um, <laughs> I'm in market for a new one. No, we we switched to to battery operated for like seven years ago or something like that, and we're not going back to to petrol because there it's so much lighter, it's so much quieter, it's it's so nice, much nicer to. And when you have the Makita batteries already, that's it's no problem. Then I have ex an excuse to buy more batteries, so that's nice. Makita yeah. also makes some pretty good heavy duty petrol gear as well, you know, for the garden. <laughs> yeah, but it works fine. And then you don't really have to think about if you're mowing at odd hours, if the neighbors are going to complain or having a garden party or something that you're polluting both the air and the sound waves. But I mean, isn't that the essence of summer? The smell of newly mowed lawn and the sound of a two-stroke petrol engine uh, with that oily smell that follows. I like the sound in the far distant, but not from my neighbors. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. But that being said, how much... Now I got several questions, but how much running time do you get? Because I have been looking into a battery one as well, but uh, I realized that... If I have to stop and charge, it's going to be a, a no-go for me. But that being said, if I could use my Bosch batteries, then of course I could run it all day around because I have enough batteries to <laughs> last me <laughs> until I've charged the first one again. Well, that depends on how how hard you're pushing it. Because if I if I cut it when it's not that long... I can almost get the entire loan done in one charge of double set of four amp hour batteries. And I mean, our our loan is about, if you uh, disregard the house and some bushes, I would guess 800 square meters or something like that. Yeah, that's good. Uh, but if it's, uh, if we're pushing it hard and it was a long time since I, I cut it, it, it takes at least uh, two sets of four amp amp batteries, so I have to stop and charge. And this last time, I had to I had to go into my my three amp hour as well. I have four four amp batteries and two three amp hour batteries. But so. given what you're saying, um, not cutting the grass before it's too long, does that mean that you cut your grass more than once a year? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> I would see, I'd like to see you do that with the flea mode. <laughs> just once a year. You just have to make uh, several passes. <laughs> like but takes that, a, year, a year, perhaps. But that, yeah. that being said, that might be the one thing that almost tipped me over to the the Makita universe. And that's their bicycle. Yeah, that they have would another... be nice. Yeah, I, I would like that one as well. But... One thing is the price tag, but it's chronically sold out. Yep. Uh, and and now, of course, you can get Makita to Bosch adapters, so I could still get the bike. But I'm sitting here hoping that someone at Bosch are going to do the right decision. But it is a German company, as if I'm right, and they are not the most uh, innovative or joyous people. So uh, <laughs> making a bicycle for uh, the Bosch brand is... Uh, <laughs> I just want to say that's not a view shared by us all on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> it's just Havard. <laughs> also, it's not the stereotypical podcast. Uh... 
any comments if you direct them to uh, behind the mistakes at an Instagram. <laughs> the mower I use for, my, for all my gardens is a, um, a mulching mower, which cuts down time because it doesn't collect the grass. Yeah. It just chops it up really, really finely. And I have a, um, it's a Viking mower made by Still mm. with um, a KOH Hell coal uh, engine on it. I, I presume that was a Swedish, still Swedish? I think so. But the engine on it's absolutely fantastic. It's really got a big pair of balls. It will cut wet grass at 200 millimetres tall. Mm. No problem. Nice, so, nice. So you can keep your weedy little electric ones for the time being. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I couldn't cut our lawn that that fine because it's it's not flat enough. So with, yeah. I would just go in a hole and dig down and have a clean clean path. If you've got a very fine lawn to look after, you're actually supposed to cut it twice a week as well, Havard. Well, I, I'm sorry, I do Twi- twice a year. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine you leave your grass that long. No, I don't. But I'm not using too much fertilizer. And of course, it's uh, I don't know the English word for it, but I'm guessing 80% of my lawn is not grass. No. No, but it's uh, nice to walk on. Yeah. At some parts, we have some some grass in our moss field. <laughs> yeah, moss. That was the word. <laughs> nice, nice and bouncy. Yeah. A bit wet, but but comfy. Uh, I, I actually had um, a thing. Uh, last time we talked about... No, uh, Howard talked about uh, the problem with having a small camera uh, and trying to focus on the lens. So you actually look in the camera when you when you talk to it and i had an idea that maybe you should put some arrows or something uh, around it so you can focus and i thought no that's a bit how about the googly eyes that's a bit boring so <laughs> why instead not to have a face <laughs> that you can focus on <laughs> I, I also have one that's more that's a little happier if the project is going going better <laughs> I love it. <laughs> oh. Brilliant. <laughs> so that's something. Well, I, to, I, to, I think our audience have to go to our Instagram account to actually know what we're talking about. Here. But it'll be uh, it'll only be fitting because I'm I'm known to talk to myself, uh, so uh, <laughs> that would just be an extended uh, <laughs> version of that. <laughs> That was really clever. I don't know if clever is the right word, but it was... Really silly. Yeah, silly. Silly, I, I will <laughs> agree to silly. Oh, that's right up my alley. <laughs> we should just call this podcast the, the Giggle Hour instead. Well, it's, uh, it beats the way it normally goes, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't jinx it. <laughs> <laughs> happy thoughts, happy thoughts. Oh. My, my wife commented and said, I can't believe you ended the podcast on death <laughs> well that is the end isn't it <laughs> yeah it's the ultimate end yeah so it's uh, it's just fitting yeah better than the starting on it <laughs> <laughs> so i got a question to ask you guys if um, any of you have ever been involved in a maker challenge before yeah i've done some mostly with australians for some reason i think it's because they're really good at putting them on i think okay uh, and that's it's really it's great fun to uh, it's a good way to to grow your community to find other people and and when everyone has done a video about making something then everyone watches everyone's videos and comments and uh, it's a really it's a really nice thing when you when you find a a build off uh, that's that really speaks to you and you have the time to do it and not yeah. like 5 days before or something like that. <laughs> my 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 flag video on my channel was something like that. I found it. Oh, make make your make a flag and put in your workshop. Oh, that's nice. Oh, it's supposed to be done on Friday. So <laughs> <laughs> so then I did it with beads, and that's it turned out pretty nice, I think, for what it was. Oh, I'll have to check that one out. <laughs> uh, the other one. Sorry, carry on. Well, that's uh, the realization I've done for the. The build-offs or collabs that I've seen, it's uh, way too late to the party. It's like uh, either after or right as they are like working up to the 
<laughs> the reveal of the results and I like, oh, was that a thing? <laughs> <laughs> but that's that's what you get for living in your own bubble. Yeah. But I mean, once in a while the stars line up and so on and uh, somewhere in the future it will probably a uh, organ themed uh, build off or something and then I'm really <laughs> ahead. I'm going to nail that one. You could just start it instead. Might be hard to get get other people on on board. Yeah. But that that's actually a good point. I mean, if you want something to happen, you can just do it. So, and it, as far as I've seen, it doesn't need to be. It might even be more the rule than anything that it shouldn't be too complicated, so that the buy-in for every participants are low enough that you actually can find a time and place to do it. Yeah, I've tried one out. Thanks for asking. I um, <laughs> <laughs> I did the, the three northern makers um, a year or so ago. Did the push stick challenge. Mm, yeah which was uh, really good fun. Um, it was just an Instagram-based one, so you didn't you didn't have to do it as a YouTube video. I did a short, but uh, not a proper video. And I came runner-up in that one with Ola Skitteren. He was the other guy that was the runner-up. He made a fantastic push stick from brass and steel, and it was just a magnificent thing. He should have won, really. Ooh. And then the guy that did win was uh, Ben from Studio Yan. You seen his yeah. stuff? Not yeah. No... Don't ring a bell. Uh, you don't know. KJ nodded, which is great for audio. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to interrupt you. You know, what a chance to, to answer. It. Yeah, yeah, I mean, he's he's great with the uh, with hand tools, much better yeah, than I am. He's got uh, quite a good knack for the old video as well. I love the way he puts this stuff together. Yeah, yeah. My push stick for that one was really crap, so it didn't. Oh, it, 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 it rightly it didn't get get a mention because it was it was crap. <laughs> I can't even remember seeing yours, KJ. Yeah, that's <laughs> <laughs> that was for the best of it, I think. Oh, no, Don't okay. scroll that far back on the Instagram. <laughs> it's better than me because I'm doing it now, <laughs> but I'm always late to the party. Um, <laughs> I actually, uh, I knew it while doing it. Uh, I cut the teak for uh, the something sign, and as I was doing it, it's like this is the last time I'm cutting like this. I need a push stick, a proper one, and watching back the video during editing oh i didn't want to edit all of that video so i I just left it out and i knew the comments were gonna be (laughs) i mean it wasn't dangerous dangerous but when i looked at it this is so sketchy that okay my next build is a push stick so i have that on the drawing board yeah that's really interesting with with the videoing yourself that sometimes it looks really bad when it isn't and sometimes you can't really see how bad it is. Yeah, I mean, the the angle didn't help. Uh, so it wasn't that bad, and I was cutting a groove. So worst case, I would get a cut, but it wouldn't pull me in, or it wasn't sticking enough up that it would take a finger off, but it was too little material, too close for comfort. So uh, Because you're yeah. cheap and wanted all of the material. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But going back to your question, Glenn, or... Are you thinking about joining or starting? Thanks for the segue there, KJ. Yeah, I try. <laughs> yeah, thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the, the, the reason I was thinking about it is um, Turgworks, Tim from Turgworks is starting up his annual scrap, uh, scrap wood build-off challenge, and that was quite interesting. I was um, almost tempted to join. I'm not quite sure what I'd make, though, or actually if I've got enough scrap timber. Yeah, well, then so you have to something small. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> But some of the entries that he has, he has some really high-level entries for his uh, challenge. If you, I don't know whether you've seen any. Yeah, of he's been doing this for a couple of years now, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm not, it's but never. I this part of year has never been good for me because I have so much other projects that have some sort of deadline. So, well, what's the rules, or do they vary from year to year? No, it's basically any any scrap wood, and you can make whatever you want. I think I think the time starts now until. Um, end of November, but um, yeah. by all means, if you're ever interested, go and check out his um, his Instagram. It might be an English-only thing, though, but uh, don't let that stop you. I think uh, they uh, they have some prices and that uh, sort of thing, but I, I think that is mostly UK-based, but everyone can can be on it. I think this is my right. how, how, how I read it. I think it's yeah. it's really nice with those. those I mean, Scrapwood challenges are pretty common, because we all have scrap wood or scraps of some kind, and having a challenge to to use them to actually build something, it's really, it's a really gr- good way to get rid of them. 
without having to burn them. <laughs> I only had one idea for a build, and that would be to make a whole band's worth of instrument instruments. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's ambitious. <laughs> It's going to require a lot of scrap. I might have to dismantle the workshop. <laughs> I mean, KJ, you actually mentioned what I often do. I, I separate my offcuts into what I can burn and not. Uh, of course, everything burns, but sometimes I have like oak offcuts and which are so small that I can't keep them. Then I have a outside fireplace and then I bring out the whiskey because I think that that's appropriate when I'm burning uh, like the <laughs> decent offcuts. So I got two piles. One that I either throw away or just burn to get rid of it. And then I have the offcuts that I burn for enjoyment. <laughs> so, of course, I could make a video and an angle out of that. But, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have anything to show for <laughs> afterwards other than a headache and a cotton mouth. <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, you ought to try and get hold of some apple wood for your whiskey bonfires. Well, that sounds... Uh... The, the fragrance from the smoke's delightful. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I've been thinking, I saw this uh, woodworker, actually, he made, like, smokers for yeah. uh, smoking your whisker glasses, and it really, I think he, he makes a lot of things, and he just made those for a giggle, almost, and they really took off. So he says uh, he, he could make those and those only. He's selling them out before he can make them. So it's really a market for that. Yeah, I saw that video. I can't remember who it was, though, now. But um, I'm not quite sure I'd like to. I quite like my whiskey. As the, as the distillery intended it. Yeah, you don't get very much infusion of uh, smokiness onto it. It's just as a lid, so it's it's like a cigar. It's it's, it's the smell, uh, okay. like added externally. I would think oh, that's way uh, too much work for just having a drink for me. <laughs> Fiddling <laughs> around, it, um, no, I'm not into that. Who has time? Yeah, that that being said, us Scandinavians. You can say a lot about us, but efficiency in drinking, that's uh, <laughs> we got that's that on our down, forefront. Yeah. yeah. So what's what's upcoming in the week for you? In the new week? More YouTubing? More building? Yeah. Yeah, I have uh, I just have to put the finishing touches on my next video that should have been out already, but but because of reasons it isn't. Uh, and then I hope to to finish off the the next the next one as well. I mean the the building part of it, and then we see how long the editing takes. I mean now for some reason every third week my my video editing time has just disappeared. I don't really know why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've noticed the same. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and and for me it's. Uh... I, we get a surprise visit, uh, and surprise is uh, <laughs> by the fact that uh, we didn't, I didn't know about it uh, until yesterday, but my mother is coming to visit the grandchildren, so she's staying over the weekend, and I can't get myself to just, okay, I'll head down to the workshop for a couple of hours while we are having visitors, and then, of course, when she's gone to bed, it's like right next to my workshop so firing up any tools would be kind of crude <laughs> <laughs> you're in there you're sanding very quietly <laughs> yeah does, does your mum enjoy a drink can you you know just get a pissed as a fart and say she's completely unconscious <laughs> <laughs> well i could i could serve drinks in my workshop and then she could do sanding that's, uh, <laughs> oh. that's a win-win that's a that's a good that's a fair point i'll look into that I mean, a bottle of rum or gin is that's worth the price of getting out of sanding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. <laughs> yeah, how about you then, Graham? Um, hopefully, I'll get to start the new project this week. If the say, if the weather's good and we've got a good forecast, but on Saturday, I'm actually out with friends for twenty-four hours. I'm off to a lake. Yeah. Doing a bit of fishing with the, my friends, affectionately known as the idiots. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. Are you are uh, you one of the idiots, or are you? Are oh you yeah, one? very much. No, very <laughs> much so. so the, Glenn two, and the two, idiots. That's a good yeah. band. <laughs> I have two groups of friends which I message regularly, and one is the idiots, and one's the scandos. <laughs> you two are obviously the scandos. <laughs> well. <laughs> 
considering the alternative, I'm happy with that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I've got I've got a bit of time Friday, and if I've got any energy left on Sunday, if I'm not too uh, worn out from all the heavy fishing, um, <laughs> we'll uh, do a bit of building on Sunday, hopefully. Nice. Going back to the the, the sanding. Uh, thing you said I mean no one likes sanding I guess, I guess that's a common theme about all makers I think I, I haven't seen a single person who actually seems to enjoy sanding so why isn't there why hasn't there been an innovation of a, a, like a, a CNC sander thing something that can read read what uh, the object's shape is and then sand around it in some way it, I mean we're living in the future. We have robots everywhere. How hard can this be? <laughs> yeah. I was just imagining when AI is taking over, then someone will be killed by a sanding robot. And that's a terrible way of going, I guess. But there are worse <laughs> robots. But I mean, I mean, a big flat surface, should it be that hard to have a, a sanding CNC? That, that should... I mean, for big, flat, for big flat surfaces, you have machine for that. Yeah, the yeah. Drum yeah, sanders. But, yeah, but I, I was thinking, I just want, like, you put a random orbital sander on a CNC head and have it move around all. And it can. You know, that what you are talking about actually exists. And it's called, uh, what what's it again? Um, yeah, employee. <laughs> <laughs> but they are quite kind of expensive but of course all uh, all uh, machinery is expensive so it's, uh, it's but now it's i'm talking a... as an introvert i don't want other people <laughs> you'd let another way another maker into your workshop though wouldn't you yeah, yeah 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 that's true but then yeah but would you do that to another maker that's the question no that i mean <laughs> that's the evil part you don't put them to, to sanding you do something fun with them or just sit around and chat you don't hey, here you can sand this oak table for me that's that's <laughs> then you, they won't come back i mean we we could make a graph to see if there's an intersection between the numbers of drinks and sanding becoming pleasurable but and when you're, when you're yeah uh, that was my next if you factor in the result as well i don't think those lines will ever meet no. <laughs> unfortunately um, I'm the exception to the rule again. I don't mind sanding. <laughs> Sorry. Well, then we know what you're going to yeah. do when you come here. Yeah. Invite Eventually. this maker over there. I'll come and do some sanding for you. I don't like hand sanding, though. I am all about the power tools. I think I all actually... sanding is boring. Yeah. So then it's Glenn, and I know another guy as well. Uh, I haven't spoken to him since we went to university, but he really loved like the detail work and he did all the sanding so we did a collaboration project we were five students building a bike and we all had our separate areas of expertise and what we wanted to do so i did all the welding uh, one did all the cad work and one did the painting and sanding and uh, one did all the calculation and that was the best well it's the only good project work i've ever done where everybody just understood the assignment and they just went off and did their thing and it all got together into the perfect result and of course that one guy just i love sanding and painting and all that so when you're finished i'll just spend 48 hours on it by myself and it will be like spit shine perfect and it was <laughs> so so they do exist out there but they are rare i could never do that i mean watching people who sand and put on primer and sand and one coat and sand and one coat and sand and finish and polish and oh god that's that's so not me it's strange because you like i say your patience and your persistence i thought you'd be all right at that well, well that's i don't i don't really feel that i have that much much patience for anybody that's disputing how much patience kj's got check out his mallet video <laughs> yeah, well, I was young and stupid and had and I had a uh, idea of could I do it this way? Yes, yes, you could, but it would take a while. <laughs> <laughs> How did the bike turn out? Oh, it turned out brilliantly. It was like a, a kick bike, but uh, with a surf-inspired uh, 
uh, theme. So the um, it was a retro bike that we actually just mangled and built up from scratch. And the plate you were standing on was actually woodworking. So it was shaped as a um, surfboard. And then, of course, we had an electric motor on it and everything. Um, of course. Which were, it was really nice. And then it, when we finished university, the question came up, okay, but who's keeping the bike? Because the university at some point will just scrap it. And we never got to agree who should have it and so on. So it was just left on campus. So God knows where it is today. So it's probably uh, run to the ground somewhere. <laughs> you should have all agreed to hold it for a year at a time. Yeah. At that time, it was... Uh, I was living in a sailboat and uh, a few other guys traveled abroad, I think. So we really didn't have a place to stash it. At least not the one of us that were really invested in keeping it. What a shame. But I, I, I think I could have welded it better to die, so I, I can make a new one, but yeah, need a metal shop for that. <laughs> there you have a, 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 a video, <laughs> finding the old bike. You used to go back and search for it, and then you remake it <laughs> when you can't find it. Yeah, so and those... Documentary travel log. And of course, for those who don't know that, I also have a YouTube channel uh especially at the university they were like do you remember that old crazy student that came back 20 years later asking for a bloody bike they built <laughs> <laughs> it's great content great content yeah yeah but that, it would be cool to make it like a documentary and this like real true crime field true crime like really take the humor out of it and yeah. just like really go in yeah <laughs> Was it Woby Design that made a bike out of wood, out of plywood, or skateboard wood? If it, built, if it was Woby, wouldn't it? Wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, that was an interesting project. Might be something worth giving a go to at some point. I think I've seen one building bicycled out of plywood, but I don't remember who it was. The first guy I think of is, of course, Michael Alm doing all the plywood stuff, but I'm not sure if it was he that built the bike. Yeah, there's a lot of bikes on, on YouTube. I think of Alex Steele making, uh, welding a bike and showing how difficult it actually is, which means turning me off to never, ever try to do it. I think when you see the quality of the welds, I used to have a, a Cannondale racing bike and the quality of the welds on that thing were unbelievable. And I, I don't think I could do a metal bike because I'd never be able to reproduce those welds. So I'd always just be disappointed with myself. <laughs> <laughs> and even if you make it, made it work, you would always be scared that build the welds hold this time. That's Should I go down thing. this steep hill in this speed <laughs> or will the bike come apart? I wouldn't worry about the weld, the weld strength, to be fair. I mean, I've, I've welded up a big four inch piece of steel, which is three meters long which is going to sit two meters in the air. So I'm not worried about the strength of the welds. I'm sure it'll be fine. <laughs> You've seen how massive my welder is as well, how capable it is. Yeah, yeah even though I, I I actually did take a welding course at university, I'm more of the, the farmer style of, of welding. You, you, you weld it and then you weld some more and then you look at it and you throw it in the air. And when it falls down, if it doesn't go in two pieces, then it's good enough. <laughs> yeah. My first ever job was a, um, a precision engineer, and I went to college and learned welding and all about metal work, only for a very short space of time. Though I didn't like, um, I didn't like at sixteen. I didn't like being in the workshops and not seeing daylight. I would absolutely love it now, though. Yeah, I think if I were to choose today, I would go a more practical route. I would probably at some point end up in engineering, but studying with older guys coming back in to fill up on the theory, but having years of practice, that was like, you couldn't put a price tag on that knowledge. Of course, us coming straight out of school, I could design anything in 3D and CAD. And then one of the old timers just came around and looks nice, but you can never build that. And then it's like, why? Of course I can. No, no, you need to fit it into a lathe. And if you're going to try and weld that, that will never. So that, uh, that experience they had going the other route before they ended up where I was, that, that is something I could never learn yeah. without spending years and years. Have you ever come a cropper on your design, the stuff you've designed so far, that you, you've designed something and you can't build it? So, so far, I think it's due to the lack of tools. But then again, I, I never 
design something I don't have the tools for. Of course, I could do it as an exercise, but I always... Everything I design, it's something that I want at some point. And if I design something that I want, but I don't have the tools for, then I'm setting myself up for disappointment. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. May I... yeah, building things that don't work, that that's a trademark i mean uh, <laughs> i build a lot of things that uh, if you take away the comedic value of actually building it it's uh, <laughs> rather useless <laughs> I, I don't design anything i build um, I'm very much it's just the winging it approach i think you're similar aren't you kj well yeah i have a pretty clear id and then i have some sketches but that's about it no no finished plans or anything like that so it's it's a little bit of both. I don't think I could get my head around design or having an idea for something and then designing all of the individual parts for it. I don't think I could get my head around that. I don't have the capacity for that. But I think it's... I also use the, the philosophy of, uh, I think it's uh, DAG, uh, design as you go. But I'm thinking the as KJ, I have a clear image or an idea at least. And then if I design it in 3D, it's often because I want to make something uh, on the CNC. But it's very much uh, still design as you go when you are doing CAD work. But instead of uh, spending the time and sweat into making a prototype and then uh, shaving off material and adding something new and trying it, you're doing it digitally before you go to uh, a step further, but I never do any calculations or uh, model testing or anything. I'm like, this this should be okay. So it's a, uh, I don't spend a lot of time into doing the design part before I start making it because drawing is, at least on the computer, is the boring part. So I'd like to get that done and get into the workshop and actually smell taste and feel the, yeah. <laughs> the build yeah i'm behind the computer drawing all day as my day job so i don't i don't need more of that in my life no so quick quick route away from that i actually try it out instead so if, do we get a little idea of what projects you're going to release kj what, what the next video is going to be about uh the next video is it's not going to be a good video. It's just something I need to well, get get out and get out of my system. It's uh, uh yeah, it, it will be boring. You you will see when you see it, <laughs> if you see it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I said it, it has some wet components. I can hint at that. Yeah, that doesn't sound concerning at all. <laughs> <laughs> No, that would be much more interesting than <laughs> than this. Uh, I've, uh, now that I'm almost done with the with the edit, I feel like it's it start off with a pretty good pacing and, and energy, and then it just drops down and becomes more boring. The the every time I I take a look at it, I I cut out like half a minute or something. So oh, maybe there won't be dangerous. any video left at the end, but who knows. That's actually really quite dangerous when you're editing a video, isn't it? Because you, you see it so many times yourself and you get so bored with it, you start cutting bits out and bits out. And Yeah, but uh, yeah, I, I might do that a bit much, but, but still, how many times can you see a person put in a screw or, or saw yeah. a plank in half? I mean, I've seen it yeah. one time. I don't need to see it five more times. I understand the principle that you have cut all the six planks. <laughs> Move on. <laughs> That is true, but I find myself watching other makers putting in screw after screw, and I still watch that. So there is people out there who are interested, but I have also lately, or as a steady increase, maybe I'm cutting more and more out of the build part. And that's because I I follow um, a couple of, uh, they are not, well, they are makers, but they also like doing video documentaries and so on. And after you start making your own videos, you also pick up on what others do in the video editing. And I see that they are cutting down the individual clips to like fractions of a second almost. But it's it doesn't feel short when you're looking at them. But what I think was a short clip of three seconds, I now think that's 
an eternity. So I always have the iteration process and I leave the camera running for way too long. So maybe that's why I also hate video editing because I, I can spend a couple of days just cutting four hours of footage down to 10 minutes that's... before I do the, the proper <laughs> editing. I mean, that's the first thing that that you outsource when you when you do professional TV to have someone scrub through all of the video and mark out at what time points. Oh, at this time, this happened at this time, this happened. So the editor can go and find the, the pieces that they want, because that's yeah. the, that's so boring going through your But I just had an idea. I mean, it's it's, it's expensive to have one videographer following you around and doing all that work. And but if we pull together, I mean, we don't have that high frequencies putting out videos. So, I mean, if we are enough makers pooling together, we can collectively hire a guy to do the rough cutting for us. And then he, of course, being a videographer, like doing it. So then he can be full time employed by uh, doing what he loves and we can get uh, our 10 plus hours of video neatly stacked down to like a 20 minute segment which we easily can do the the finishing touches on so i'm with you on this but let's go the extra mile and get a videographer that also likes sanding then <laughs> <laughs> yeah that might be harder to find yeah i do really uh, like the the youtube channel call me maybe uh, Justin Maybe is a videographer doing documentaries from the maker community, but I think he's fully occupied. <laughs> he's also employed at uh, that epoxy company in the States, Total Boat, I think it is. Yeah. So I don't think he's uh, up for grabs, but um, the videos look really good. At the meantime, you just have to remember to turn off your camera. <laughs> Have you gotten the shot or so? No, I'm just going to finish this. No, you're not. You're going to turn off the camera because you don't need six minutes of you sanding this part. Oh, I have to tell myself again and again. I normally don't take more than two, three minutes of a particular operation. And yeah. Footage. Uh, yeah. Even if that, uh, I mean, on my best days, I have like 50 clips of 30 seconds. Yeah. That's that's the mostly my sweet spot. I quite like moving the camera around, so I'll often stop what I'm doing, move the camera and do another 30 seconds that way. So I can end up with a little bit more footage of the same operation, but from different angles, which I, I quite like messing about with. P partly in that is because I'm cheap when it comes to hard disk space as well, because I don't want my, a lot of files cluttering up gigabytes that I won't need. Yeah, that's... Uh... That's a milestone that I just hit because I have up until now, I have saved everything I've ever made, audio, video, anything. It's just, I keep it for, well, I might use it later, but I think we discussed it a couple of episodes ago after I turned to filming in 4K because that allows me to zoom in um, because I have realized I can't have the camera too close to the operation. Um, I ruined one lens by doing some angle grinding. The shots were really cool, but uh, the next shots after that was kind of blurry. <laughs> uh, but that means that now all my data is quadrupling in size. And of course, yeah. when I don't turn the camera off, I have, I think the last video, I had like 100 gigabytes of raw footage. And Jesus. I just realized I'm not going to use it for later. So I've now started on, I keep the raw materials for a couple of videos. But now I started to deleting the raw materials for some videos. Mm. Um, and that really helps because uh, I'm at the threshold where I need a new hard disk, but I'm also looking into a system of having a RAID solution back up and then it's kind of expensive. So the, the easy solution is actually to just delete some raw data. Or go the, the rest of style and just buy another external hard drive. Just keep yeah. filling that and then get a new one and a new one and a new one. Storage has always been a massive issue for me. I um, I always delete the raw footage after I've edited a video. I save the video and I then put that on an external hard drive. Uh, but um, I've not got any raw footage from any of my builds now, which sometimes I'm a little bit sad about. It would be quite nice to go back and have a little bit of a play. Don't say that. Not now. <laughs> <laughs> I save everything. Well, well, the thing is, I my wife said to me uh, just the other day, 
it would be really good if you if you'd still got the raw footage from both drumstick builds and then you could edit the two together and have them have them running side by side so i'm pretty sure at one point you're going to want you're going to have the idea to do that with your hellcorder video yeah and, you know improvements you made and things like that running side by side with your old video i think that'd be quite an interesting video so you know you probably ought to but I, see, I can't... see this little trash bin before you press delete permanently <laughs> Yeah, but then again, if if it's not an option, it's not something that I think about. Yeah, of course, I, I can say it, it would be nice to have the raw footage of that video, but I'm thinking the amount of video I'm accumulating, and if, even being optimistic, I don't think there are many of them I will revisit for like the next ten years. So I, I think it's a trade-off, actually, uh, getting rid of some of the raw footage. I just looked at my files and I think I average about 10 gigabytes per project. So it's not that much. That's a good thing in not filming in 4K. <laughs> yeah. Going back to your wet video, KJ, have you, uh, have, you, have you managed to inject a little bit of KJ humor into it? I think at the start, but then uh, all the all the opportunities for, for humor sort of disappeared. So, yeah, it might just be the intro as a short. Who knows? <laughs> I think some of, some, some of your videos you view was pretty good when you took, take the axe to the beauty parlor and things like that. I thought that was hilarious. <laughs> well, you have to, if you're not enjoying yourself, who else will? Absolutely. <laughs> Speaking of enjoying yourself, I've been looking for a segue for this for a long time now. Uh, I've, I've actually decided... decided permanently to go to the Skaper Festivalen in in Oslo in about two and a half weeks, I think it is. Um, so, yeah, the 21st to the 22nd of to October in Oslo. I'm going to be there uh, at least on the on the Saturday. I come Friday evening and and leave uh, in the middle of the of of Sunday because actually my family misses me when I'm gone, apparently. <laughs> so I'm oh, going to be nice. there, and uh, and I know some makers that I know are always going to be there. So that's going to be fun. And hopefully hopefully I get to meet some new people as well. Yeah, I'll be going. Um, I also had a look at the program, which is really good this year. Um, I haven't quite figured out yet if everything is located at the same place or if it's a bit decentralized, but... Uh... No, they're not. Was... They're not super good with information about this event, are they? Well, uh, I mean, for these kinds of events, I usually go to their homepage, but it's not the, uh, it's not the abundant uh, source of information. At least it hasn't been. It'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll take it as it pops up. Uh, I'm actually alone with the kids that weekend, so I might take at least one of them with me. And it's uh, it's very nice for kids to see some of the projects and so on. So that will be nice. Well, I'm really, really happy that you're both going to meet up without me. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you have to have your priorities right. Yeah, I'll ho hopefully meet you. Well, see you both in May. Meet you for the first time, Avard. Yeah, that's um, that's a plan. Excellent. I've already been looking into what's the most uh, efficient way of getting there. Well, that, that depends on what, what kind of efficient. Or are we calling, call, uh, talking about fuel efficiency or economics, <laughs> going back to the sailboat style? <laughs> well, uh, I was you're thinking of fuel. going the traditional way, so I'm coming, <laughs> coming by longship and yeah, uh, I'm going to ravage room. my way up the coast until I <laughs> find my people. <laughs> ben should be starting to get scared when he sees in the background the dragon head of a longship being carved <laughs> slowly. <laughs> oh, that would be something. <laughs> the cry of the Valkyrie through the Hellcorder on the front of the ship. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's rather, rather brilliant. <laughs> I, I did actually see the um, uh, on the web page for uh, Skaper Festival, uh, they had like uh, the different kind of entries. And then, of course, if you are a maker, then you can apply for having a stand or something. And then 
okay, I, I have enough projects that I can show some of them off and would probably be fun for someone, but then I realized, hmm, maybe not everything is ki are kids friendly and then some of it is kind of cumbersome to get into the city and yeah, then there's all the people. So <laughs> it's uh, it's best to like observe in the background, I guess. I think that's probably the best way to do it anyway. It's just at least you'll get to be able to wander around then, won't you, and speak to people and see what everybody else is doing rather than being fixed at one stand. Yeah, that's true. So what I have been thinking about, should I do a, like a sticker stunt? Uh, so I'm uh, looking into, should I make some uh, very specific stickers? <laughs> Just for the occasion. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think one thing is very clear now, if you're going to do the whole sticker swap thing there, we're going to need to get some stickers made for number one crude mistakes. Yeah. We talked about that, didn't we? The the huge ones, the like... Uh... Yeah, with a QR code on. Yeah, like one by one meters or something. I <laughs> you just totally dominate the sticker wall. <laughs> <laughs> but then you, if you had that for trade as well, then you really should you should be able to see your sticker in the background of someone else's video because it's a backdrop of the entire wall. I think it was at my last job. Uh, next door, there was this company making the all the digital prints and whatnot, and we were working past there every day, getting a coffee or going for lunch or whatever. And at some point I saw they had this, like these pull-ups where you use that stands and conferences and so yeah, on. Yeah. And it's just a spur I had that how much those, those really cost. So I just popped in and they were not as expensive as I would have thought initially. So it wasn't that expensive to actually get like this uh, pull up with a stand for making yourself in one to one. <laughs> so I have at some point been thinking, do I want to do something funny uh, with a kind of a pull up, uh, like a display or something, but I should find a venue where it's going to be hilarious to make something and then just discreetly go in and because when they're rolled up, it's like this small suitcase, so nobody yeah. will even think about it. And then you just drop it to the floor, and then it's like, whoops, and there it is. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> so maybe you should do that at the Scopper Festival or uh, <laughs> maybe at the, the Maker Meetup in May, if we could make a number one crude mistakes, like a pop-up something, and then we could just find the best location ever and just zip, <laughs> there it is. <laughs> like, bring your own sticker wall. <laughs> I mean, Glenn is a man with a van, so I think uh, we can get a bill going. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> we can we can take what we like. <laughs> it's got a big roof rack on it as well, so you know we're not even limited to the space inside. So oh, the sky's the limit. I just, just got an image of the car from Dumb and Dumber. <laughs> <laughs> I think I have some fake fur somewhere in a box. <laughs> How big was your car again? <laughs> it's a it's a big small van. That's the technical yeah. measurement for it. <laughs> Could at least make some ears for it or a tail or something. <laughs> I just went completely childish and thought maybe just a giant cock and balls for the front. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Flapping in the wind. <laughs> Classic. A big, a big flaccid penis <laughs> <laughs> dragging on the on the on the road. What would we call it? Havard's giant organ. <laughs> oh. sounds like it's time to wrap up. I think. Hang on, one more thing. Yeah. So, since we first started chatting, you two mentioned this Moomin mug thing, and. I know what the Moomins are. I can remember seeing them on the TV as a child. But I, I feel like there's some sort of private joke going on between you two. And tonight you both flashed your Moomin mugs. So what's going on there? Well, it's, a, it's become a... I, th I think there is a designer who is working with one of the, the major, uh, like... Uh, I don't even know what it's called. A company that makes cups. Um but they have become collectibles. So it's become like a whole thing having moving cups. And for me, they are the perfect size for a cup of coffee. And uh, 
of course every cup has a different image so it's very easy to spot your your one in the crowd um yeah and it's also very easy to find one with a motif that you like yeah um and of course in norway the hospitals and red cross have struck a deal with this company so if you are donating blood for instance uh, you get a cup for every time you go there uh, yeah. and of course buying them i think they range between like 25 30 pounds per cup so it's actually something like that yeah it's it's a decent deal actually uh, go and uh, donate blood to get one of those cups so yeah. all yeah. my cups are actually something i got from that so i hadn't paid a penny for them i thought you were looking at a little pile <laughs> yeah <laughs> i need another mug i need another mug <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's uh but they have they have a limit on how much you can uh, deliver of course so it's um yeah it's just a fake idea way yeah <laughs> so i was just curious I, th I thought in some way you were taking the piss out of me with your moon moon mugs no it's just uh, uh, it's no. just being here <laughs> fair enough <laughs> but that being said uh i um when you go to donate blood, they, of course, you are screened for everything. And every time you go there, it's like, a, of course, now it's a digital form. You have to fill out that you haven't been in to Africa the last couple of months and you haven't done this and that. But you can't have any nicks or scratches on you uh, because of infections, uh, obviously, but I didn't realize that. And of course, I've been doing a project in my garage and I've cut myself or something and I didn't think of much about it. Uh, seldom do. Uh, and then I turned up and went through that ordinary routine and questions asked. And then she just glanced over to my hand. No, that's a no-go. And of course, if you're not or if you're waiting for too long before your next session, they send you reminders especially depending on what blood type you have and what they need at any given time. But I've realized that, well, I usually can't go because at some point I have some scratch from the workshop <laughs> at any given point. So the frequency has gone down as I have spent more time in my workshop. Of course, I was thinking, well, that's just boosting my immune system, which <laughs> would make me more attractive for them. But obviously, no. <laughs> Well, then, KJ, wrap up? Thank you very much for listening, everyone. Uh, we'll be back next week with another episode of Number One Crude Mistakes. Yeah, that works. <laughs> <laughs> Was that good enough? That's oh, brilliant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs>